Now let's take a tour of the keypad demo LabVIEW project. I have the 4x4 keypad attached to connector B. All right, the main VI is running at the moment. Let's try some single button key presses. I'm just randomly pushing buttons on the keypad right now. You can also try some multi-button presses. Those are two at a time. I tried three or four at a time. Good bit of variety there. Now the scan indicator on the bottom is just another way of portraying the same information. The upper left button appears here and the lower right button appears over there. The scan order is from top to bottom and left to right. I'll show you the first four here. All right, generally what we'll be doing in this VI is driving the column lines to a, a low level and then scanning or reading the row lines to determine the state of the push button presses. I'll begin with the high level view first and then get into details. Here I'm setting up the column drivers. Here's my overall while loop. And then I have a for loop that scans through the four columns. I begin by setting all the columns to high Z or high impedance mode right here. I then individually write one at a time and a low output to drive each column. I then read the row lines and then display the results over here. Now getting back to some details. This is inside the advanced I.O. palette, specifically looking at digital I.O. Make use of the open, read, and write sub-VIs. Open establishes a connection to the specific digital output. Notice that you can pick freely from the A, B, and C outputs as needed. I then specifically in picking outputs zero through three, and these are my column drivers. This task is fed into the while loop and into the for loop. The read sub VI does not actually read any useful information, but rather sets the line to input mode, which is the same thing as high impedance mode. Now here I'm using the for loop index to then select amongst the four possible sub diagrams of this case structure. Each one contains a write, and it's to a specific channel, and it writes a low value. That's the false constant. The scanning process then requires that each of these lines in turn is driven low. Also note that the control plus scroll wheel is a handy way to get through the sub diagrams. If you're using pull down resistors, then you'd want to drive each line high, and you can adjust that right here. Now, the state of the four row lines are read simultaneously with the digital input, Express VI, and that's located right here. That returns four scalar Boolean values, which I then bundle into a one-dimensional array. The NOT operation converts from active low to give me an active high indicator. Next, this loop tunnel takes the one-dimensional array and with loop indexing, turns it into a two-dimensional array. So I'm accumulating all of those scan results. And then that ultimately is displayed in this two-dimensional presentation. Now the one-dimensional view called scan is similarly handled with a loop tunnel, but in this case, it's using the concatenating mode. And that means that the individual 1D arrays are simply strung together to make one long array presentation this way. All right, let's wrap things up by looking at the propagation of the air cluster. Here I'm using the merge airs node, and that's available right here. Feed that into the while loop and the for loop, pass it through the various structures that we see here, and eventually or that together with the state of the stop button. Pressing the stop button or any air condition breaks you out of the overall while loop. You pass through the simple air handler and finally execute a reset on the MyRio. Here I am pasting the loop at 10 milliseconds per loop pass.